Deputy Fire Marshal from the city of Fargo, Jamie Garvey. And it's Fire Prevention Week here in town. And uh, Jamie's been kind enough to stop by and give us a few things to think about and maybe some helpful reminders as we get ready to transition seasons. We're going from summer to fall and very quickly now into winter, it looks like. And so every season brings with some things we need to think about as far as being safe with fire around our homes and our businesses and so forth. So Jamie, thanks for coming in. Well, thanks for inviting me. Glad to be here today. Yeah. So I guess I'll just kind of turn it over to you and let you tell us a few things that we should be mindful of that we should be thinking about here as we're kind of uh, getting out of uh, the uh, the warmer days and heading into the, the winter months. Awesome. Well, first, uh, we would like to invite this everybody from Fargo to stop by our stations, uh, whichever is their local station, uh, the fire station, from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock until Saturday. And So any night this week? Kind any of? night this okay. week until between Saturday. Six, okay. Between 6 and 8. Yep. So if you have uh, a kid in your family who'd like to be a firefighter, come check out what the station life's like. Uh, meet the people who are, are there serving you. They'd love to meet meet you as well. Alex, you can't go every so, day. Uh, <laughs> Alex likes so the you're, firemen. You're, you're giving tours. And yeah, I can make the rounds to all the stations. There you go. Oh, I'm the ears perked right up on that one. <laughs> There's seven of them. It's so. like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll uh, start right now. So, so what's going on? You, you show the kid around the fire yeah. truck and kind of let him see what all, what's all up about that? Or? Yep. Ask questions. Meet who uh, who's there serving you. Mm-hmm. And uh, let them get a chance to meet you. Um, the, the focus of this year's fire prevention week is we're, we really want to talk about having a plan mm-hmm. when an emergency happens. So we want people to have an escape plan and know what they're going to do when the alarms sound Yeah, and really make sure that you got two ways out and that you test that smoke detector. So you know that that's going to work because if we have a working smoke detector in our homes and where we sleep. Uh, that's going to give us a 50% better chance of surviving a fire. Where should the smoke detectors be placed in your homes then? So we want one smoke detector on every level regardless. And then we really want them in the sleeping areas and outside of the main sleeping area. And what happens is I, I talk to kindergartners a lot. Um, and this is how I explain it to them. So is, you're right at home here in the studio Yeah, this will be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I let them know that when we go to sleep, we're not going to wake up from a fire. Uh, we're not going to smell it. Our nose goes to sleep. Um, we're not going to see it. Our eyes are shut. Yeah. The only chance we have is for a smoke detector to be smelling for that smoke for us and then wake us up at night. So it's not a good idea to have one in the kitchen you and use it as a timer. You do not want it in the timer. kitchen. No. Nope. <laughs> All the casseroles yeah. done. <laughs> I was going to say, my toaster checks my smoke detector about every right. time I use it. Yeah, and we, we encourage uh, anytime you're near... If you need one near a kitchen, it should be a heat detector, not a smoke detector, because ah. we don't want false activations. Uh, we don't like the nuisance alarms. It teaches us bad habits. Yeah. So get them out of your kitchen and uh, move them near the bedrooms. One What's on every the best level. way to check your fire alarms? I know sometimes you just forget about them up there. Yeah. They have a test button on them. Uh, so if you reach up any of them uh, that you see are going to have a little test button. Uh, I guess the exception to that is like we're in a facility here where they're built into a bigger system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if apartments, the hallways aren't going to have that, but inside the individual units, a lot of the time they'll you'll still be able to test. And do yours. that what twice a year? It's um, the recommendations on testing them are making sure you push that button once a month. Oh, um, batteries well. are change the clock change when when time changes. Yeah, yeah. Change yeah. The clock, I think change mine the need to be done. But yeah. It's uh, those really give you a chance when an event happens to to get out of your house to don't, wake up. Aren't early. they supposed to like beep though? Don't, don't don't think of those little beep beep beeps once they start to go Low out. Low battery. Uh, yeah. So, don't yep. they do that or, or? They give you a chirp. Yeah, if, that. Uh, if the battery's low, um, but we don't want to hear that chirp. We want to okay. we want them nice and fresh. And I know on new construction, Jamie, they're they're wired right into the house. So, yep. And if the only way the battery takes over is if the power fails, which is nice. The other thing that's uh, – there's a lot of smoke detectors up in our community that are over 10 years old. Right. And pretty much all the manufacturers say that they will – they're that they're good for 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if, if you have – if you know that you've been in the house for 10 years and you don't – Yeah. Uh, it, it would be good to replace them to get ones that, that the company will still stand behind. 
and we'll notify you during the emergency. By the way, the, if you're uh, wondering about uh, daylight savings times, uh, daylight, sa daylight savings time, it ends November 3rd. So we got about another month mm -hmm. left on that. What about the carbon monoxide? Is that a big problem? I know with propane heaters it can be. And so if you have any fuel burning appliances in your home, if you have an attached garage, uh, carbon monoxide detection um, is something that you should have in there. They do make combination smoke carbon monoxide ones. And uh, the when the smoke detector goes off, it gives you the three beeps in the pause. Uh, oh, okay. And then three beeps. And if it's the carbon monoxide one that's going off, it's four beeps in a pause. So it'll mm. that's how you can tell the difference. Jamie, I've got a question for you. And, and this is going to be a little bit of a guess. But if you went to 100 houses in Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo, in the area, how many of them you think would have some kind of faulty piece to their smoke detection system i what, what would be your guess on that because i bet it's more than we think it would be thank you for asking that question because it's more um i learned about this we've done smoke detector installs we've gone around with uh, the red cross and knocked on doors and asked people if we could come into their home when i was first teaching in the schools kids would tell me i don't have a smoke detector in my house and i'd kind of think well they don't know or yeah um and we're finding that um, after events, we're finding a lot of disabled smoke detectors in the homes. When we did the door-to-door, -door, uh, we were able to protect a lot of people that didn't have the protection before we got there. Um, it is higher than you think. It, it, it's very uh, uh, neighborhood dependent. Newer, yeah, newer sure. neighborhoods, the houses are built and you can kind of set it and forget it for a little while. So those are... Um, those are probably more covered. Mm -hmm. So that's a hard question to ask, but there are pockets where we need a lot better protection. Yeah. It's just something you got to be mindful of. And it's so easy to forget about it. Right. Yeah. What do we want to, you talk about, we want to have those escape routes for our family to get out. Give us some simple tips to think of when we're trying to plan a, a way for us to get out and, and what do we do once we get out? Kind Perfect. Of um, what we want to do is as soon as we hear that alarm, as soon as we see smoke or fire, we want to get to our easy, safest way out, which is going to be our door. Um, we, we don't need to be jumping out windows right away yet. So if, if that smoke detector works, we're going to go to our easy, safe way out, go to the door. Um, if the fire has progressed beyond that and we are blocked, our easiest way out to the our bedroom door is blocked. We want to make sure that we keep that door closed between us and the fire. Close the doors. Okay. But if you're a parent, though, you want to make sure to get the kids up, you know. Yes, um, and that needs to be a part of your plan. Okay. If you have a baby, they're not going to be getting themselves out. If you have someone with mobility challenges, um, yeah, elderly, who's, maybe who's our age or who's elderly, um, <clears throat> they will have. Uh, you need to account for that. But if the fire progresses, the best thing that can happen for even an infant is if that door is left shut. Doors pretty much will give give us another 20 minutes um, is usually what any door will give you. And we've got fire, seven fire stations in town. And if that's door shut and the fire's in a different room, um, that should, gives us a chance to maybe come in through the window uh, and have a, have a clean environment for that person. Now, I've seen demonstrations of fires inside homes and things, and it's just mind-blowing how fast furniture and drapes just go up in smoke. Uh, what is the time frame for that typically these so, days? So um, a lot of times the, the, there's different agencies who are, are doing tests on that and building it, and we can flash over a room in two minutes. And it, it depends on the configuration of the fuels and the materials and what right. you're using. But the, the furniture that we're bringing into our homes now is just solid gasoline. It's that, that foam in the yeah, couches. Yeah, The the thing that we worry about for the firefighters worry about is the heat release rate of those of those products. And they the just chemicals. They give off a ton of energy really rapidly into that container, and so uh, decades ago we did not have fires progressing as quickly yeah. as they are now. Shouldn't there be something though that furniture makers would have to do to prevent this? They or? do, and that's um, the ignition is hard. So a cigarette left on a couch should not start these for the furniture. They have to be tested so that they okay. don't start ignition. But once a fire starts and 
and is impinging on it and that piece of furniture gets going, uh. then it takes over. Then it, they, they don't have, uh, there's not rules for heat release rate yeah. once, once a, a sofa gets going. Hmm. Good stuff. Jamie, we could talk all morning, but thank you for coming by and giving us a few reminders, some really good stuff to think about. Appreciate your time today. Thanks for inviting me. Had fun.